Now having back-to-back -back Ford EcoBoost cars, my time with them has taught me a lot about adaptive tune strategies that auto manufacturers are implementing into modern cars. And Ford has been doing it for a while now. They've been doing it for a long time and they have probably one of the more sophisticated adaptive tune strategies straight from the manufacturer. And for anyone who may not know what that is, well, basically Ford vehicles are kind of a pain to tune, but that's because their tuning strategy is highly advanced and more or less the EcoBoost vehicles because forward vehicles can adjust timing and boost. And really what it's designed to do is just command a different load depending on certain sensor data. And it's really a great system because theoretically you get the best of all worlds. If you have bad fuel, it will adjust for lower octane fuel all on its own. If you're going into a different elevation, it adjusts all on its own. If it's hot out, it adjusts all on its own to ensure the engine is making the most power it can safely. It's a really awesome system. Even though all manufacturers don't implement this into their cars because I'm sure the engineering that goes into it is just ridiculous, more manufacturers are starting to do it now, especially with turbocharged engines, which is pretty much almost everything produced nowadays. And when it makes matters worse, they're not only turbocharged, but they're usually high compression, direct injected, and small engines and they're making a lot of power somehow from the factory so it's like man you have little room for error a lot of manufacturers probably are starting to use adaptive strategies to maintain reliability and just overall usability of the vehicle with that said coming into this vehicle and Hyundai, which is a brand i am very familiar with i've just never owned one myself i had to wonder do they do that with this vehicle? Does this vehicle adjust timing or boost or commanded load based on certain parameters? And more importantly, does it do it based on octane? I've showed you before the manual in this car says that it makes optimum power on 87, but max power on unleaded. But then it says unleaded 87. So I was always confused if it means unleaded 93 because most fuels you get at the gas station are unleaded now unless you get a specific racing fuel. It made me wonder if really there's more power or max power, the 201 horsepower that it's rated at is at 93 and not 87 or, or at least a higher octane like 91. So a little bit of Google searching couldn't really find me anything and I think it led me to uh, the point where I got to take matters in my own hands and do the testing myself. So that's what I'm gonna do in this video. I'm gonna go ahead, take the car, fill it up with fresh 93, drive it around, and we're gonna do a draggy run, and we're gonna do a log. I'm gonna compare it to the one I did on 87 stock, full weight, and see if the car is any faster. See if the log shows any more timing or any more boost throughout the run. And then we'll have a definitive answer whether this car actually makes more power on higher octane fuel on the factory calibration or not, like the Ford cars do. So I guess with all of that said, let me get my butt up to the gas station, top this off with some 93. Shh, don't tell Hyundai I did that. I tell you what, I've been driving the car around for a little bit now and I can't tell a difference. The butt dyno does not perceive any difference in the performance of this car with good fresh 93 and a Sprint of E85 just to make things nice and happy. I mean, that's about the same as it was before. That's really not any different. So that's an indicator for sure that Hyundai does not have any type of octane adjust strategy built into the software here for the car. But I can't rely on the butt dyno. We're gonna have to go ahead, get a draggy run in with a log and see what the draggy says. See what the log says. The log will tell me if it's adding timing or adding boost, wherever, however, and if it isn't, well, then we know the answer. So let's go ahead, let's get that done and out of the way and we'll go and check over the results of the log and the draggy run. All right, cool. So let's take a look at the log here. Let's see if the car actually cared about this 
fuel. The log here on the left is 87 and the log here on the right is 93 with a small splash E85. Let's see what the car did. Obviously, I mentioned it didn't feel any faster, but that's never a good way of telling. Let's see if the car actually cared. Remember, here in the beginning of the run, I stated the car really holds itself back. We'll sample 4,000 RPM right here, 4,000 RPM. It's pulling back. 1.9 degrees of spark. We're at a 96.2 calculated load, okay? And 14 PSI. Let's go over here to our 93 log. We'll sample the same section here. Interesting. It looks like it's pulling a degree less timing back. The calculated load is practically the same, 96.8 versus 96.2. Overall, there doesn't look like there's too much of a difference. Now, let's go ahead and sample a different section. Let's sample this section here, because this is where there was a nice rise in spark timing, right here at three and a half degrees. Once again, we're at 14 PSI boost, and this is at, uh, let's try to get right at 6,000, 6,044. So come over here to our 93 run, and you can see the sparked is a lot different. There's a, this little spike right here, actually. Look at that. It's not flat like it is on the 87 run. It does like kind of add just a little bit of timing right here. Big jump up to 4.5. It never did that during the 87 run. That's at 5,900. There is a little variable there. I'm not sure maybe that is something to do with the octane, but who knows? Then we'll look at the tail end of the run. So we'll go to the very last bit here on the 87 run. Let's see, what gear would this be? One, two, three, four, fifth gear. Fifth gear out the back at, uh, let's, uh, let's sample, let's sample this timing peak right here before I let off. Three and a half degrees, 14 PSI of boost out the back. Right before I let off, we're at a 100% calculated load. And if you look, it is practically the same. 93 octane, actually look, it's running a half a degree less of, of timing. Holy crap. Oh, but look, when I get here towards the end then it drops down to 99.6, that's crazy. How is the car running worse with higher octane? That is nuts, but it it is. I mean, it could be because it's hotter this day, you know, I don't know, but it is running a little less timing at the back, that's nuts. So overall, what does all of this mean? Well, it means that it doesn't seem like it makes a difference. The car doesn't seem to care whether there's 87 in the gas tank or some nice 93 and a little bit of E85. It's making the same power regardless, which I guess goes with the what the manual says. You know, it runs optimally on 87 unleaded. That's what they have this cartoon to make max power on and that's what it does as long as you have at least 87 it will be happy for what you've been waiting for let's take a look at the draggy run and see how they look because maybe that's a completely different story so here is the draggy run the old run the original run 87 is on the left and the new run is on the right off the pet you can already see the new run is indeed slower not by too much i mean it seems to be around a half a tenth slower all over the place, except that the initial start of the run, the 60 foot is identical in both at 2.52 seconds. But overall, everything else is pretty much the same. Considering the draggy isn't super accurate, I feel like these numbers, even though they are different, they're well within the margin of error. And 974, at 74.98 versus 980 at 74.87, it trapped the same speed regardless. It really didn't make any difference. You know, the log showed a little bit of a timing here and there, but nothing significant. And towards the end, it was less timing. And well, the run kind of reflects that. You can look at the accelerometer on each run. You can see that the run with 87, it doesn't have as many peaks where the run with 93 has a little bit higher peak right here. But if that really made a difference, the 60 foot would have been different and it's not. 60 foot is the same. Furthermore, the 40 to 80, which I like to use because it takes traction out of the equation, is the same. 
87 was 7.14, 40 to 80, 93 was 7.15. It is the same. The car does not care. Well, Hyundai, you've done what you could. Unfortunately, Hyundai doesn't do what Ford does. It's not super important. It does go and show some limitations you have with non-adaptive tune strategies. When you start adding more power, you are basically, um, you know, you're at the mercy of the fuel pretty much. And even with the EcoBoost cars, if you had bad fuel, really bad fuel, chances are damage would happen before the ECU had time to correct itself. But under normal driving conditions, it would optimize itself depending on fuel octane. So unless you're really going crazy with it, it would otherwise maintain as much power as the car could make based on fuel quality. So when you don't have that ability and you start adding power and you have no way of adjusting certain parameters or the load of the vehicle based on fuel quality, things can go south real fast and under moderate driving conditions, not at like wide open throttle, like half throttle could create an LSPI issue and yeah. So I'm gonna have to be very, very careful when I do decide to add power to this and uh, understand that I have that limitation there and I cannot rely on the vehicle to adjust. For the octane of the fuel, I'm gonna have to just be very careful. Of course, there I mean, there are some things I can do, I can add, but look, this thing ain't gonna be no race car, okay? It's just supposed to be a daily, but I need to keep it running as long as possible. So we'll have to see what needs to be done other than just making sure you always got good fuel. But uh, sometimes stuff happens and you may hit the 93 button on the pump, but the fuel delivery driver decided to put 87 in a 93 tank. We'll figure it out. But nonetheless, it was cool to see how this car um, doesn't do anything. <laughs> But hopefully when we start doing stuff, we're going to need higher octane regardless. And with that, I'll be going over what I want to do with this car in the next video. But until that video, I think it's going to wrap it up here for this video. Let me know what you think. Put your thoughts in the comments. Otherwise, I'm going to wrap it up here. And of course, if you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Share with everyone you know. If you want to see more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And keep a look out for the next Cars Creative video.